In this video, I am going to get back to the basics, back to my roots. No, not my roots of making off-road videos. Nay, I am referring to my roots of explaining complicated subjects in a way that even you will understand without me trying to impress you with technical terms or big words and doing it all without boring you to death or begging you to subscribe to my channel like all of those more desperate YouTubers do. So in this video, I will be explaining some of the differences, or at least the differences that actually matter between ham radio and GMRS. Not just the hardware differences and not just the rules, but also the one thing that most other YouTubers never like to discuss, and that is the differences in the lifestyles. And just for all of you know-it-alls watching, let not your heart be troubled, because verily I say unto you, as you can see right here with your very own ocular sex, indeed I do have a license, so I am fully qualified to talk about both GMRS and ham radio as much as I want on YouTube without some people crying about my lack of a license in the comments. This is a ham radio, and this is a GMRS radio. And transmitting on either of these radios requires a license from our overlords at the FCCs. To get a ham radio license, you must first pass a multiple choice test, which, by the way, I would just like to point out has absolutely nothing to do with actually using your ham radio. And to get a GMRS license, you simply purchase it online, just like a fishing license. For the most part, every person transmitting on a ham radio must have their own ham radio license. When you purchase a GMRS license, that license covers your entire family, meaning that they can all use your call sign and transmit on any GMRS radio. As you can see, both of these radios look very similar to one another. And in fact, these two radios are 98% the same. The biggest difference is that this UV5R ham radio is locked so that it can only transmit on the ham frequencies. And this GMRS radio is locked so that it can transmit only on GMRS channels. Now, all of you sharp-eared viewers may have noticed that I said channels and not frequencies, like I did when I mentioned the ham radio. And that is because ham radios operate on frequencies. And depending on which ham radio you have, you can transmit on potentially thousands or more different frequencies. A GMRS radio, on the other hand, operates on channels. 22 channels to be exact, all standardized between all other GMRS radios. So channel number six, is the same on this GMRS radio as on any other modern GMRS radio. If your GMRS radio is repeater capable, there are also eight additional special channels just for repeater use. But let's not get into that right now because the point is GMRS has 22 basic channels. A GMRS radio is limited by the FCC's to transmit at a maximum of 50 watts, and that is only permitted on certain channels. However, you do not have to worry about which channels can transmit 50 watts or not, because a real GMRS radio has all of the rules built in, and it will not allow you to break any rules. A ham radio can transmit at over 1,000 watts, and it does not have any rules or guardrails built into it, the way a GMRS radio does. A ham radio can, according to our overlords at the FCCs, only talk with other ham radios and licensed ham radio operators. A GMRS radio, however, can talk to other GMRS radios and 
FRS radios. FRS radios are those inexpensive radios that you can find at the Walmart, and these radios do not require any kind of license to use. So even if you are not a radio dork and have zero interest in buying a GMRS license, you can still talk with your radio dork friends that have GMRS radios and GMRS licenses. GMRS radio channels are all in what us licensed radio experts refer to as the UHF frequency band. This is not something that you have to remember or something that you even have to understand, but what this means is that the particular flavor of RF electricities that squirt from the antenna of a GMRS radio will only spray in a straight line and they do not penetrate. Penetrate. They do not penetrate through stuff very well. For example, a lot of houses full of gravitationally enriched people can block GMRS RF electricities. And because the GMRS RF electricities travel only in a straight line, us radio experts refer to this as line of sight, line of sight. This means that for the most part, if you can see it, you can talk to it. GMRS RF electricities will go through a few buildings and around small hills, but the GMRS RF electricities will not go through or around mountains or bounce off of the firmament dome very well, if at all. So because of this, the most fars that a GMRS radio will get when talking directly radio to radio, what us licensed radio experts refer to as simplex, simplex. The most fars they can talk is going to be around approximately, on average, give or take 30 miles or so in the best conditions. Both ham radios and most GMRS radios can make use of repeaters to extend their fars, and in good conditions, a repeater can increase the fars of a handheld walkie-talkie GMRS or ham radio to 100 miles or so, or maybe even more. However, there are far, far more ham radio repeaters in use than there are GMRS repeaters. And ham radios, specifically the kind of ham radios that operate in the lower frequency ranges, something that this Pacific radio does not do, the ham radios that can transmit on those lower frequencies, are potentially able to transmit all the way across the entire flat earth. And this is because those very low frequencies that ooze out of that type of ham radio can bounce off of the firmament in the sky, squeeze around mountains, and travel many bars. This is what allows ham radio operators with the right type of radio to chat with anonymous men from all around the world. GMRS is virtually an analog only radio service. The only exception being very short digital text messages and digital location information. If your GMRS radio can do that, most GMRS radios cannot do that. Whereas ham radio allows you to do all sorts of fancy digital stuffs. GMRS may be used for business use, as long as everyone transmitting on their GMRS radio all have their own GMRS licenses, but ham radio cannot be used for any commercial use whatsoever. And now allow me to touch on the forbidden subject, the subject of the lifestyle choices of ham and GMRS radio users. For most normal people, a GMRS radio is simply a tool, no different from a telephone or a hammer. And most GMRS users use their GMRS radios only to stay in contact with their group while off-roading or hiking or making other adventures with other people. GMRS is not primarily for making contacts or finding random men to chat with. Most normal people use their GMRS radio for a specific Corpus. They turn the radio off when they are done, and they do not think about the radio again until their next socially interactive adventure. Ham radio, for many people, is a hobby and 
a lifestyle. And sadly, in some cases for some people, ham radio is their entire identity. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Because of these lifestyle differences, GMRS tends to attract one type of person and ham radio tends to attract a very, very different type of person. To read more about the differences between those types of people, just read through the comments on this video. Congratulations, you are now a YouTube certified expert in the differences between ham radio and GMRS radio. You are excused.